Welcome back to my channel. In this lesson, you're going to learn about writing direct and indirect proofs. Now, let's see the difference between direct proof and indirect proof. In direct proof, we have informal and formal. For informal, we are just going to write our proof using a paragraph form. While for formal, we are using a two-column form or two-column proof. The two-column in the first column, you are going to write your statements. And the second column, you are going to write your reasons. Now, for indirect proof, we have also informal or formal. Same thing, you can write it in two-column proof or paragraph proof. But, this kind of proof, this is a proof by contradiction, which means you are contradicting the conclusion. Contradicting means negation. If that is equal to, then you are going to contradict that it's not equal to. If it's not equal to, then you are going to contradict that to equal to. Okay? You will learn about this as we go on with our discussion. So now, direct proof is an argument using deductive reasoning. It begins with information that is assumed to be true. Then apply logical steps like definitions, properties, theorems, or postulates to establish your conclusion. Okay, while indirect proof is a proof by contradiction, negating, assuming that the negation of the conclusion is true. It means if the conclusion is what I said, it, let's say x is equal to 5, and then you are going to assume that x is not equal to 5, okay? Assuming that the negation of the conclusion is true. If the deductive argument ended with a contradiction, then the original statement is true. So, you are going to observe now the st your first statement and the last statement. If they contradict, then the original statement is true. Okay? So, they should be opposite. So, here I'm going to give an example of direct proof and indirect proof. So, I have here I have here the conditional statement. This conditional statement, you can write this in another way. Given, then proof. Prove. Okay, I'm going to show to you later. But this time, let's have this. If 3 times the quantity x plus 5 is equal to 21, then x is equal to 2. Okay? Now, how I'm going to write this direct proof? How I'm going to show, to prove that x is equal to 2? In direct proof, we have here, I'm going to use the two-column proof first. So, in the two-column proof, the first column, that's the statements, and the second column, this where you're going to write all your reasons. For every statement that you are going to write, you need to support it with reasons. What re uh, where it came from, what reasoning you're going to give to support. Of course, based on definition, properties, postulates, theorems, like that. Now, you always start with a statement. So, the statement is, the hypothesis is, 3 quantity x plus 5, or 3 times the quantity x plus 5 is equal to 21. And what should be the reason there is given. That is given here. Okay? Always start with that. Then, from that, how are you, how, what, what are the steps? How are you going to arrive at this x is equal to 2? What are the steps, logical steps, that you are going to use? Okay? Now, there uh, two-column proof, it, it's just like you are organizing your thinking here. Now, so what are the steps, logical steps that I'm going to do is first, I'm going to distribute this three. Okay, so means by using distributive property, I can distrib distribute 3 times x and 3 times 5. So that's my second statement. So 3x plus 15 is equal to 21. And my reason there is distributive property. Okay, next, because my target is to show that x is equal to 2, it means I'm going to solve for x. From this one, again, in order for me to arrive 
at my conclusion here, at the conclusion here, first, I need to subtract 15 on both sides of the equation. Okay? So, subtraction, property of equality. I'm going to subtract 15. So, minus 15, minus 15. This becomes 0. So, I have 3x is equal to 21 minus 15. That is 6. And my reason there is subtraction property of equality. Um, I, I am allowed to do that. Okay? So, 3x is equal to 6. And then, I need x is equal to 2. So, what would be my next statement is x is equal to 2 by division property of equality. It means I'm going to divide both sides by 3. By 3. So, 3 divided by 3, that is 1. So, I have 1x or x. And then, 6 divided by 3, that is 2. So, that is division property of equality. So, I have now x is equal to 2, which is the conclusion here. Now, I can say now that the conditional statement is true. I able to prove it. Okay? That x is equal to 2. Now, what about indirect proof? So, indirect proof, again, is we are contradicting the conclusion. So, your first statement should be x is not equal to 2. Okay? Proof by contradiction. What should be your reason there? That is your assumption. Negating the conclusion. So, the reason there is assumption. You're assuming that x not be equal to 2. And then, number 2. Of course, you need to follow what is the given here. That's the given here. So that is 3 times the quantity x plus 2 is equal to 21. So your reason number 2 there is given. And then from that, you can have 3x plus 15 is equal to 21, which is again the distributive property. Okay? Because you want to show that this 2 will contradict. Okay, and then here, 3x, so again, you are going to subtract 15 on both sides of the equation. So, you will have 3x is equal to 6 by subtraction property of equality. You are going to subtract 15. So, 15 minus 15, 0. So, what you have left here is 3x. And 21 minus 6, 15, that is 6. Okay, you don't need to show that. Because uh, you want your presentation going to be clean. If you're going to give your reason here, they know how to perform it. Okay, now, again, how are you going to arrive at x is equal to 2? You're going to divide both sides by 3. So, therefore, x is equal to 2. And that is by division property of equality. So, now, your first statement here, this is the first statement. And the last statement contradicts. It means that statement 1 and statement 5 contradicts. Therefore, the original statement is true. Okay? Now, in case that this one is not equal to 2, it means that the original statement is not true because both of them can't be not equal. Okay? One should be equal, one should not be equal. So, again, statement 1 and 5 contradicts, therefore, the original statement is true. So, now here, this is the conditional statement. Another way of writing this is like this. You write the given, given, that is 3 times the quantity x plus 5 is equal to 21. And the then here, that's the conclusion, so you can write that as your proof. Prove x is equal to 2. Okay. Now, the paragraph proof is just like you are just explaining in a par paragraph form your statement and your statements and reasons. So, like this one. It is given that 3 times the quantity x plus 5 is equal to 21. By distributive property, 3x plus 15 is equal to 21. It means distributive property, you need to distribute this. Using subtraction property of equality, 3x is equal to 6. It means you subtract 15 on both sides of the equation. So, what is left is 3x is equal to 6. Thus, by division property of equality, x is equal to 2. See? That's informal. You can explain the way you want. 
Okay, it doesn't mean like this. You can have your own uh, way of explaining this. This is what we call informal proof, the paragraph proof. Okay, so I, so I have another example here of direct proof using two-column uh, two proof. So given angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary, angle 2 and angle 3 are complementary, prove that angle 1 is equal to angle 3. Okay, so here are the statements and here are my reasons. So first statement, of course, always the given, start with that. Angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary, angle 2 and angle 3 are complementary, so given. Angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees. You can also put measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees. Measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 is equal to 90 degrees. Or angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to 90 degrees. That is the definition of complementary angles. Now, my statement number 3, from this statement number 2, if angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees and angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to 90 degrees, therefore, angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to angle 2 plus angle 3, okay? Which is this statement 3, and that is what we call transitive property of equality, if you recall your properties of equality, okay? So, if 2 are equal to the same one, therefore, these 2 are equal, okay? Now, from this, I can say that angle 1 is equal to angle 3, or measure of angle 1 is equal to measure of angle 3, by subtraction property of equality. I can subtract angle 2 on both sides of the equation. I can remove this one. So what is left now is angle 1 on this side, and on the other side is angle 3. Okay? So other way here, you can put measure M like here, measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees. Measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 is equal to 90 degrees. So measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 is equal to measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3. Then you are going to subtract measure of angle 2 on both sides of the equation, measure of angle 2. So this one will be cancelled. So what is left on this side is angle 1 or measure of angle 1 is equal to measure of angle 2. That is by subtraction property of equality. So this is an example of a two-column proof. So that's all for this video and thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye! Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can access easily my incoming videos for the third quarter. It's free. See you in the next one. Bye!